A lot more information is coming out about the M1 Max and the way that they are benchmarking and what it means or what it doesn't mean. There's a lot of people going back and forth about this stuff and varying opinions on one side or the other about this, that, or the other thing. So I guess I just wanted to put my two cents in with some of the feedback that I've been getting from uh, comments and tweets on my channel as well as comments and tweets that I've seen on other people's channels and videos and Twitter and you know, all that kind of stuff. So let's go ahead and get into that right about now. But I think the most interesting conversation, at least the the most uh, the most visible conversation about this that I've seen, has been between uh, Jonathan Morrison and Linus from Linus Tech Tips. It shows the two sides of the coin really interestingly. There's no way to get around it. These new benchmarks are absolutely incredible, and I think the mind struggles to wrap the brain around what we're seeing here. Mac Rumors put out some benchmarks uh, yesterday, and I think there's been a few more benchmarks here and there. I'll leave links down in the description below to all that stuff. But the Mac Rumors benchmarks, what we saw was a bench, a benchmark on Geekbench 5 that had a single core score of 1687 and a multi-core score of 7433. Now, we need to put that into context a little bit. We also need to just address the fact that benchmarks are benchmarks. A benchmark is meant to be just that. That will show you the varying high watermarks between one product or another. Uh, they aren't meant to be the end-all be-all of this conversation. However, I think it is worth discussing these benchmarks in lieu of actually having these new Macs in our hands yet, just to really try and start to have that conversation about what this is what it could potentially mean for computing moving forward. I would have loved to have seen a 16-inch MacBook Pro or an iMac Pro. This is a new ecosystem that's going to have to grow over time. So, one, I like that Apple started with their most popular computers, their best-selling computers. With doing that, they're going to get more computers out into the real world, and so they'll have more and more data to use to adjust what they need to adjust. That's part of this two-year timeline that Apple's on for uh, getting these silicon chips integrated into all of their computers. It's going to take time to really know, you know, what works, what doesn't, what needs to be ported, what was already ported. It's not just slap a new system in there and then uh, you know, away we go. A lot of people have complained that Apple didn't really give solid numbers uh, for a lot of the claims that they were making. I, yes, they didn't. I mean, the, the presentation that Apple gave was a presentation to introduce the consumers to their new products. And I don't think that going deep into like graphs and charts and all kinds of stuff would have served the consumers all that much. The proof will be in the pudding. Apple will release these machines next week and they'll get into people's hands and we'll start to know a little bit more about what they are really capable of. Big Sur comes out for release today if Apple is still on schedule Thursday of this week. And uh, I'm, I'm gonna take a risk and I am going to install Big Sur on my main work MacBook and just see what it breaks. It's important to know. I, I edit my videos in Final Cut Pro. I do audio recording in Logic Pro. Uh, I, I will be fine with Mac-only programs if that's what it comes down to over the next couple of weeks or whatever. I want to see if my Intel Mac that has 16 gigabytes of RAM, it's a late 2019 MacBook Pro. And from some of these charts that I found that are comparing different Mac models to one another uh, with the MacBook Air, just the MacBook Air at the baseline model, against you know the 27 inch iMac from 2020 the the iMac Pro the Mac Pro MacBook Pros from different vintages my 2019 15 inch MacBook Pro has a 2.3 gigahertz chip inside it has 16 gigabytes of RAM that's an i9 chip and uh, it was a $2800 $2900 computer when i got it and um in single core score, it's not even on the list. In multi-core score, it is dead last. The MacBook Air sits somewhere in between, but it's important to say this. That is the MacBook Air without dedicated GPU, without any kind of blah-de-blah. -blah. To my understanding, it is the 
MacBook Air that has eight gigabytes of RAM and it destroys the machine that I have. These processors look to be running at about 3.2 gigahertz. I understand people have biases, people have preferences. Uh, you could look at uh, somebody like John Morrison and say, he's, he's all in the tank for Apple. And then on the other side, you could look at someone like Linus and say, well, he's in the tank for the PC master race. I mean, the, the thing about those two creators and, and a lot of creators on YouTube is that they approach how they make their videos and how they bring their points across in much different ways. I mean, John Morrison is generally kind of a let's wait and see, but this is pretty exciting. Here And here are some facts that I can give you right now to kind of start to make the point. Linus is more acerbic. He's always more likely to make his points with the use of like a cynical kind of snarky take on something that maybe in the beginning he's oversimplifying for effect. He does always get around to talking about the good, the bad, the ugly, etc., etc., and his reviews and commentaries usually come out pretty fair and balanced, but a lot of times, you know, he he starts out with the cynicism. This is not a criticism per se. It's just I'm trying to lay out like the two different camps of how people look at this stuff. And while it does boil down on the surface to Apple versus PC as it has ever since the 90s, uh, it's a little bit more nuanced than that. And I think that PC people are looking at things differently than people who use Macs. And that makes sense. Because for the longest time, you could judge the performance of a PC based on a few critical specs. And those were the cave paintings on the wall that told you how good this was versus that. And the thing is, like, now the architecture of these new M1 chip Macs, it doesn't fit with the paradigm of looking at base clock scores and amounts of RAM and amounts of cores and all that kind of stuff. They just don't work that way. And it's hard, understandably, for people to not be able to wrap their heads around the idea that, you know, the, the language is changing. And a lot of people don't like Apple and they have good reasons for not liking Apple. There are reasons that I don't like Apple. I've said many times that I have been an Apple customer for a long time. I consider myself an Apple sheep, uh, and I've, I've, I've come to terms with that. <laughs> but that's never stopped me from saying, like, these are things that Apple is doing or has done that have made me angry or made me frustrated or caused me to scratch my head. I'm going to put links to the John Morrison and the Linus videos down in the comments below so that you guys can check out what they had to say. I guess my vantage point is a little bit different than probably a lot of people who are, I mean, I know my analytics tell me that my vantage point as a 49 year old is going to be a lot different than the majority of the people that watch my videos. And I would assume that the majority of people that watch Linus and John's videos, I, my biggest demographic is 24 to 35. And I haven't been in that age bracket for almost 15 years. <laughs> the benefit that that gives me is that I've seen this before. I saw Mac go from PowerPC to Intel. I saw the the new iMacs come out and, and sort of commoditize like a, a computer as, a as an appliance in your home kind of deal. I, I've seen the good and the bad of PCs over the years. I've built PCs myself. There's frustrations on both sides. Here's my final takeaway. I got into doing this YouTube stuff because for as long as I can remember, I would stand around the proverbial water cooler at work and bend people's ear about this latest development or that latest development in tech. I loved to see, I loved to watch and talk about the movements forward that were being made over the years. Like I, The new iMac after Steve Jobs came back was such an incredible jolt to the system of computing overall. If you remember, the majority of computers before the iMac were beige boxes that weren't really inspiring. They weren't made to be inspiring. They were made to be tools. And, and the iMac kind of pushed things in a different direction for the better of the entire industry, in my opinion. When smartphones came out, man, I got every smartphone I could get my hands on. iPhones, Samsung, LG, Motorola, HTC. <laughs> 
I got, and this was before I did anything like what I do now here on YouTube. I just was so infatuated with, so curious about the tech. To be honest, tech over the past few years has been kind of stale. We've had incremental walks up the ladder for just about everything that's out there. It's exciting that NVIDIA is really pushing the envelope with the 30 series graphics cards. It's, you know, the Navi cards from AMD, the Ryzen chips from AMD. Those are all like really pushing the limits of what PCs can do. So when I see people being cynical about this new development from Apple and just kind of poo-pooing it and, and talking down to the achievements that Apple are in the process of making, and in some cases totally denying without any kind of actual evidence that it is happening, I get frustrated. This is what frustrates me about the tech industry, the tribalism, the sort of blind following of one conventional wisdom over another. I always try to look deeper. I try to call things out when they're there to be called out. I try and give things credit when they are pushing the envelope or actually doing something that hasn't been done before. I welcome change from wherever it's coming from because that's what moves us forward and that'll, that's what's gonna keep this conversation alive. Let me know what you think down in the comments. I am very impressed with what I've seen from these Macs. The benchmarks that have just come out, the presentation itself got me super giddy about the possibilities for this next wave of Macs. And honestly, in the aftermath of all that, the negative Nancy stuff coming from different directions has kind of bummed me out. And I don't want to be bummed out. And I know there are a lot of other people out there who don't want to, you know, get bullied or bummed out about their excitement over a new development in a technology that they're really into. Talk to me. Let's have that discussion. Thanks so much for being here. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, only 30% of the people who watch these videos are subscribed to the channel. And I think that that number could be higher. If you come here regularly and you haven't subscribed, maybe think about hitting that sub button and the bell notification. If you've just found the channel recently, or if this is the first video you've ever seen, consider that subscription. I'm gonna be bringing a lot of Apple content about the new Macs, uh, about the new HomePods, about Samsung devices like the Z Fold 2, as well as other Android content. And if you're interested, we have a membership join button down there so you could be more part of the Painfully Honest ecosystem. And uh, then there's also merch like this t-shirt and this phone case that's available for just about any phone that you could have that's like within the last three or four years, uh, as well as some other designs and coffee mugs and stuff like that. All that stuff helps me do what I do. Thanks again for being here. My name's Jason, sometimes known as the JTL. This is Painfully Honest Tech. Tech so honest it hurts. Until the next time, I'm out.